Home stretch, guys. Track eight, seven days. Okay, we're back to like the loud, funky stuff. <laughs> Nice piano. I know I keep going on about pianos, but I do have a bias. <laughs> okay. I won't talk about the brass. I think I've already said enough about them. <laughs> I'm glad to hear another cool bass line on this track. It's a very bright stream there. Hmm. I'm sorry, I, I don't have much to say. Okay. More of that wow wow sound from the electric guitars. Featuring more of the bass. It's a bit of cool pizzicato from the strings. Go to church. I mean, the piano roof is, is interesting, somewhat. Alright, alright. I don't know why... Okay, first off, I feel really bad that this song followed straight off the heels of uh, debutante ball because I really feel like debutante ball set a really really high standard for musicality for sophistication in composition and then just coming back to this sort of track it's an it's an all right track but it wasn't like outstanding either it's weird because even though the instrumentation was coming at us just thick and fast, you know, the synthesized brass, the sort of epic strings and that groovy bass line, the very aggressive piano, it was still just like, eh, it's okay. It's not particularly exciting. I think also why I'm not getting pulled in or hyped with this song compared to previous songs is that the melody itself is very generic. There's nothing really to write home about. I thought the driving piano riff was decent. like. Whenever they did something different with the instrumentation, like I think when they featured the bass line in verse two and added like the funky wow wow, you know, on the electric guitar, that was cool. They even had some um, synthesized string pizzicato, which added a bit more texture to the whole song. 
but overall it was okay it's okay hey random stranger feature rc would like to make a quick note or apology i guess to seven days in particular this was one of the tracks that i did end up liking more upon multiple re-listens and sort of with the passage of time yes uh i kind of do still think that there's nothing particularly memorable about the melody but there is a bunch of cool synth sequences and enough variations between each verse and pre-chorus and chorus to create a decently layered and textured track i Honestly, it just put my initial lackluster reaction down to me suffering from DB hangover, which is an actual thing. So whichever track that followed DB wasn't ever going to get a good treatment from me because nothing could ever uh, compare to a DB. So there you have it. There is my apology out there. Track 10 is damn good day. Here we go. Do we have a sexy sax alert? Oh, oh, I do like those fat synth pads. <laughs> and the portamento that they put on that, like the. as well. I can vibe to this, which is saying something. Hey, it's like a little sprinkling of chill trap there. Okay, we're back in business. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. Those synth pads, more please. <sighs> I'm so glad they were either able to bring in a real sax or they finally found a synth uh, brass plugin that was worth its salt, you know? I also love that flute. It just keeps getting better and better. Here we go, just build into that breakdown. Or not? Ah. Ah. Oh, I wish they'd given us a bit more of that quiet acoustic guitar breakdown. Still, I mean, this song is still a bop. Uh, honestly, it is such a huge difference when they manage to give us real instruments, or at least real sounding instruments since. Yes, this has a really cool vibe. So I didn't drink, but that's fine. If the aim was to go for this smooth chill vibe, then they hit it. Also, having listened to almost the full album now with Spectre, it feels like they were really trying to play the versatility card. Every second track seems to be striking out on its own um, to different genres, or at least trying different things. The flip side is though that Spectre doesn't really have any coherence to it as an album, uh, but they did have Suisei's talents at their disposal, so why not try different things, you know? It's another question, like whether each track successfully utilized Suisei's talents, but what you can say about this album is that it definitely 
uh, experiments. You know, some of the tracks miss, but that's just the nature of album writing. I also want to clarify something because I feel like, or maybe I have gone on and on and on and on about how certain synths and certain songs sound cheap. And I am by no means a synth or an anti-synth purist. I mean, 90% of the stuff that we hear these days is probably all produced via synths, which is actually really cool. Synth and sampling tech has developed so insanely fast uh, in the past few years that someone like me would have trouble distinguishing between a real and a synthesized instrument if it was made by a talented enough producer. For things like big band or R&B and funk, I feel like the song just shines more if you can afford to use at least some real instruments or real sounding synth instruments instead of using synths that just sound like foldable plastic. So it's odd, you know, this huge discrepancy across Spectre with regards to the quality of synths used. This track, I think, nailed it. It sounded so much better compared to other tracks that were also heavily synthesized, but really just fell short. Only two more tracks to go, guys. Soiree and Newton, and then this 10,000-old journey of Spectre will come to an end. If you'd like to make a song recommendation or give an existing recommendation a bump, you can check out my coffee page. Otherwise, I'll see you for the last Spectre review video next time.